Hello everyone, my name is Warby. I'm a product manager at Palto Networks and my focus area is public cloud. I want to talk to you today about auto scaling virtual firewalls, VM series Palto Networks firewalls in the AWS cloud. So in this case I have a VPC or virtual private cloud and I already have an application load balancer and a couple of VM series firewalls. The important part about this integration is I'm going to leverage AWS auto scaling. What that lets me do is add and remove compute, in this case firewalls, on demand. So based on custom metrics that I'm sending from PanOS, maybe it's a data plane CPU or maybe it's the number of sessions, I can automatically add new VM series firewalls in an auto scaling group. And conversely, when the traffic dies down, I'll automatically remove those as well. So this solution, as we have so far, can be fully automated using a combination of CloudFormation templates and bootstrapping of VM series firewalls. I'll show you how that works. And then we'll talk about how we add applications and automate that process as well. So this, what we see so far, is delivered as a CloudFormation template, or CFT. So that the template actually creates the auto-scaling group, it creates the AOB, creates the networks, the routing, and everything for us. The VM series firewalls themselves are automatically configured using a combination of S3 buckets from AWS and our bootstrapping feature in PanOS. What the bootstrapping feature does is it lets us predefine a configuration, licenses, content for the VM series firewall so that when it boots without any manual intervention, it's ready to secure traffic. Optionally, we can include information on how to connect that VM series firewall to Panorama so that we can forward logs to Panorama and consume the latest uh, security policy, for example, directly from Panorama. This will be very important later when I talk about how this solution scales. In addition, these VM series firewalls are going to be configured, again, using bootstrapping to send metrics directly to CloudWatch so that when, for example, the session table gets too full or the data plane CPU gets too busy, we can send an event and CloudWatch will automatically trigger that event to add a new VM series firewall or remove one automatically. So this is great for the security tier, which auto scales independently of the application. The next step is how do we automate the addition of an application? So I'm going to leverage the NLB or Network Load Balancer from AWS. It's a, newer load balancer, it's very high performing, it has a static IP which is easy to route traffic to. And as those are added with the correct tag, I will automatically detect that and add the necessary NAT and routing rules to my firewall to send traffic to that application. So when a new NLB is deployed with the correct tag, it's likely going to be deployed as a template that will include the application servers or compute that are actually being balanced. So this might be a web tier, for example. When that tag is correctly configured at the time that's deployed, we have a Lambda function that detects that event and will automatically configure the rules on the firewall to send the traffic to the new application. The policy can still be managed via Panorama or on the firewall, but the routing will happen automatically for you using this solution. So for example, the ALB on the outside might have multiple application pools for dozens or even hundreds of applications, forwards the traffic to the firewall. The firewall, based on how that traffic was forwarded, can see that it's a unique new application. Using that automated rule, send it to this new application one down here. Over time, you're going to add more applications. And you'll be able to, con to continue to leverage that initial security tier. It will scale automatically for you as needed. So you can have, as I mentioned, dozens or even hundreds of applications with the NLB fronting the application. And because the AOB sends the traffic uniquely to the firewall, the firewall knows which application to send that to. So we've automated the routing, but you can have policy that's unique per application or maybe has common elements across multiple applications. So now that we have the architecture built out, what we've, we affectionately call the load balancer sandwich, now let's talk about how that scales independently for the two tiers. The way that looks is, based on the usage, for example, for a particular application, 
we might add new web servers in this case as needed for that application. That may or may not trigger an event for the firewall. It could be that the firewall auto scaling groups are running just fine and they don't need to take action. But over time, you'll have more applications and the applications themselves may grow and based on the custom metrics, we'll automatically add new VM series firewalls. When the application dies down and things go back to normal, we'll remove one of the firewalls as needed. And this can scale quite large if needed based on metrics that you can decide how conservative or how aggressive you want to be, how responsive you want to be to that demand. The important thing here is that these two tiers are scaling independently. So each application scales on its own metrics and the security tier scales on its own metrics. So in addition to the automated scale out and scale in that we get through auto scaling groups, we also are getting cloud high availability using a combination of multiple availability zones and the self-healing nature of an auto scaling group. So if an ASG detects an instance, whether it's an application server or a virtual firewall, as being unhealthy due to some underlying failure, it will automatically remove and replace that, again, using our bootstrapping so that it's fully redundant. Again, it's across availability zones, so we can survive many kinds of failures with fast convergence, also using load balancing to route around any failures during the temporary time where it's being replaced. Now in the public cloud, we can get the same level of redundancy that we're accustomed to having in the data center. Please go to our cloud template page. There's a link to this solution and you can try it out for yourself. Thank you very much.